So today we're going to look at another problem in Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics. So we have a simple pendulum um, that is attached to a point of support on the edge of a wheel which has a fixed center and a radius r and this wheel is forced to rotate with a constant angular velocity omega and this motion takes place in the Earth's gravitational field. So the first question is to find the Lagrangian and the Lagrange's equation of motion. So I've drawn a sketch of the situation below and in this problem we're going to take downwards is the plus y direction and we're going to stick to this convention for the rest of the of the um, problem. So we want to find the Lagrangian so L of Q q dot and t. So let's start by finding the x, y coordinates of the mass m. So from the sketch we see that this, sorry this is p, that the x coordinate of the point p is given by the radius times the cosine of this angle which is omega t since the disk is rotating. So we can write that x equals r cosine omega t and we then want to find the distance, so let me draw that in another color, so green for example, the distance from here to the sorry, the mass. And so we can just use that this distance is it's this distance we want and that this distance is just L sine phi. So from this we get that x equals R cosine omega t plus L sine phi. And for y we can use a similar logic so y equals r sine omega t, right? So the p is found, so the height is found like this. So in fact y is minus r sine omega t plus l cosine phi. And so now we want to get the kinetic energy, right? Because if we remember l equals t minus v. So the kinetic energy can be found found by differentiating x and y with respect to t. So let's start by doing this. So x dot equals minus r omega sine omega t. Right, I'm differentiating this because the derivative of cosine is minus sine plus l phi dot cosine of, of phi. So I'm just using the chain rule. Um, d by dt of sine of phi of t is phi dot times cos phi. And we do the same thing for y. So y dot will just become minus r omega cosine omega t minus l phi dot sine phi. And if we remember the kinetic energy is just half m x dot squared plus y dot squared. So we can just find, sorry, we can just find x dot squared and y dot squared immediately. So x dot squared is equal to r omega squared sine squared omega t so I'm just expanding using the formula a plus b whole squared is a squared plus b squared so let me write that plus 2ab where yes so now we have minus 2 r omega l phi dot 
sine omega t cosine of phi plus l squared phi dot squared cosine squared of phi and similarly for y is r squared omega squared cos squared omega t plus right because we have two minuses so that becomes plus um sorry plus two r omega cosine omega t l phi dot sine phi plus l squared phi dot squared sine squared phi and now if we if we add these two um expressions together we see that x dot squared plus y dot squared is r omega squared times cos squared omega t plus sine squared omega t so I'm just using this this plus this then I'll do this plus this because that's also easier plus l squared phi dot square cos squared phi plus sine squared phi and then I've got this somewhat nasty term in the middle so we can group the 2r um, omega l phi dot so plus 2r l omega phi dot times cosine omega t sine phi minus sine omega t cosine of phi and the first thing we notice is that this becomes 1 and this becomes 1 right because cosine of x squared plus sine of x squared is 1 so x squared dot plus y dot squared is r omega squared plus l squared phi dot squared plus 2r l omega phi dot cos omega t sine phi minus sine omega t cosine of phi and the term in the brackets can be uh, dealt with by recalling that um, sine a cos b minus cos a sine b equals sine of a minus b so therefore cosine omega t sine phi minus sine omega t cos phi is simply minus sine of um, sorry minus sine of omega t minus phi and we can tidy that up by using the fact that minus sine of x equals sine of minus x so this is equal to sine phi minus omega t so our kinetic and so sorry our um, velocity squared is just r squared omega squared plus l squared phi dot squared plus 2 r l omega phi dot sine phi minus omega t and therefore t is just just let me just write that in one line so this is just half n of this is t now for the potential energy for v we just have to state what is our reference for the potential so our reference for the potential we'll just take it as the origin so the point o so o is the zero potential reference 
therefore v equals minus m g y right because positive y is downwards therefore v equals minus m g and we said that y was minus r sine omega t plus l co cos phi so l cosine phi minus r omega sorry minus r sine of omega t there we go and so from this we can construct the Lagrangian so a Lagrangian is just L equals T minus V equals half M R squared omega squared plus L squared phi dot squared plus 2 R L omega phi dot sine phi minus omega t minus mg l cosine phi minus r sine omega t so this is the Lagrangian for this system now if we want the equations of motion we have to use the following um, result so the equation of motion is just dl by d phi equals d by dt dl by d phi dot so let's just start working now so dl by d phi partial l by partial phi is going to be so there is no phi here, there's no phi here, here we've got a sine phi so it will just be m times r l omega phi dot cosine phi minus omega t and oh also sorry this should be a plus because it's t minus v so this should be a plus and minus m g l sine phi now, so now we want the partial derivative of the um, the Lagrangian with respect to phi dot. So that would just be dl by d phi dot is just m l squared phi dot plus r L M Amiga sine phi minus um omega t. Cool. And now we want the total differential. So d by dt of partial L by partial phi dot, which is just M L squared phi double dot plus R L m omega total derivative of sine phi minus omega t and so to deal with this total derivative term we have to be a bit careful and recall the formula for the total differential of a function so let's imagine we have a function f of x y then df so the total differential is just df by dx dx plus df by dy dy and so df by dt total differential of f with respect to t is just df by dx x dot so dx by dt plus df by dy y dot and so to compute d by dt of sine of phi minus omega t we just do d sine phi minus omega t by d phi times phi dot so that would just be phi dot 
cosine minus omega t and then minus omega cosine phi minus omega t. So this gives us an expression for um, d by dt of dl by d phi dot dl by d phi dot is m l squared phi double dot plus r l m omega phi dot cosine phi minus omega t minus r l m omega squared cosine phi minus omega t and to get the equation of motion we just equate that to dl by d phi so that is just m l r omega phi dot cos phi minus omega t minus mgl sine phi And we see that we can simplify this equation a little, so these two terms will cancel out, and then we can probably divide everything by um, m times l. So that would give us l phi double dot minus r omega squared cosine of phi minus omega t plus g sine of phi equals zero. So this is the um, equation of motion for the system.